In this video, I look at the basic principles and mechanism of a scanning electron microscopy or SEM. In the previous video, I explained the microscopy-based nanoparticle characterization as well as advantages and disadvantages of imaging with electrons. A scanning electron microscope is the technique of choice for analysis of a specimen surface. They are designed primarily to examine material surfaces like reflection light microscope. This is the SEM image of titanium nanoparticles. And this is the SEM image of titanium silicon mix oxide nanoparticles. It can be seen that these synthesized nanoparticles have a nearly spherical shape. According to SEM images and by image software, size of these nanoparticles are 60 and 20 nanometers respectively. SEM can be used to examine the surface morphology and to estimate the obtained structural shape. Here you can see the SEM image of the synthesized zinc oxide nanoparticles. The SEM image of zinc oxide nanoparticles revealed uh, its size at uh, as 96 to 110 nanometers. In this picture you can see the surface morphology of a rock plate by SEM image. This image of the rock surface depicts a rough surface with pores and cracks. Here you can see a schematic diagram of a scanning electron microscope. In SEM, an electron beam is directed toward the specimen instead of a light beam, as in the case of an optical microscope. A highly concentrated electron beam is shot from an electron gun located at the device's top. The two main electron gun types are field emission guns which generate a strong electric field that leaves electrons from the atom, and thermionic guns in which the filament is heated until the electrons stream away. The SEM scans the surface of the sample with high energy electron beams. Thus, SEM dif uh, differs from conventional light microscopes as they use light waves to create a magnified image. In SEM, when the electron beam strikes the specimen surface, it interacts with the surface. When the incident beam of the electrons Hits the specimen, X rays, and three types of electrons are emitted, which are backscattered or primary electrons, secondary electrons, and auger electrons. SEM makes use of the primary or backscattered and secondary electrons. High resolution images are produced by SEM revealing details of around 1 to 5 nanometer using the secondary electrons. The electron column has the scanning coils and the electron beam is passed through them to the final lens. This deflects the beam in vertical and horizontal directions so that it can perform raster scanning over the surface's rectangular area. Signals are detected and amplified with the, help of, uh, with the help of electronic devices, displaying them as images on a cathode ray tube. Raster scanning is synchronized with the microscope. The displayed image is a distribution map of the signal intensity emitted from the scan area of the specimen. In SEM, the electron beam is focused to a spot and is scanned sequentially across the specimen. 
At each location, signals are emitted from the specimen and collected by detectors. The detector signal is synchronized with known location of the beam on the specimen. And the signal intensity is used to modulate the corresponding image pixel. The signals collected in series are combined to form an image whose dimensions and pixel distribution depends on the scan pattern chosen. Typical electron energies are 1 to 30 kV. In the next video, I'll discuss about the key features of the scanning electron microscope, which are electrons, vacuum, specimen, and control of the electron beam. If this is your first time here and you want to learn material characterization techniques, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you for watching this video.